The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice. Thanks for tuning in to Brothers on Law on Go Country 105. I'm Larry Mandel. And I'm Rob Mandel. And we've been trial attorneys here in Los Angeles for over 40 years. On our show, we will discuss current events, talk about legal issues, and have some very entertaining guests stop by. So stay tuned every week for Brothers on Law right here on Go Country 105. Good morning, everyone. We're Brothers on Law, and I'm Larry Mandel. And I'm Rob Mandel, and welcome to the show. Hey, Larry, do you remember when, about 20 years ago, and we were already partners, lawyering together, and all of a sudden, there was this gigantic lawsuit over breast implants, and we represented several women uh, in that big litigation, and it Dow had to Corning. do with Dow Corning, and I think Mentor was another one, and it had to do with the silicon leaking out of uh, breast implants, and it was a very, very bad situation, some very horrible uh, diseases and problems, connective tissue diseases and immune disorders, uh, disorders uh, came about, and it was billions and billions of dollars that had to uh, be... Uh, you know, used to to help these uh, these folks out, and, and now it's come full circle again uh, with the recent revelations that some other uh, implants are causing problems. This uh, there was a recall. Allergan. Yeah, the Allergan uh, or Allergan, as you say, and and a, a, a very serious link to uh, a particular rare form of lymphoma, a blood cancer, I guess. And um, so, you know- What do they call it, Rob? Non-Hodgkin's disease lymphoma? They they call it large cell uh, lymphoma. And- um, We have somebody here to talk about that. Well, we have uh, someone to talk about these breast implants, uh, someone who is uh, versed in a plastic surgery is a board certified plastic surgeon. His name is Dr. Elliot Hirsch. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, you know, so uh, you know, tell us from the from a, a physician standpoint because you're now you're in the middle, mm-hmm. right? And um, uh, you know, you have to rely on the quality of the products and rely on the FDA and and all these others, the manufacturers to to have safe products. So what 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 is where do you stand uh, in this situation? Where do you and your fellow plastic surgeons uh, stand? Well, it's it's complicated. You know, it's it's not a simple situation. The um, the FDA and the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. The position is that if you have textured breast implants and you don't have any symptoms, everything's okay with them, then there's nothing you have to do in terms of removing them right now. But you should, as any woman with breast implants should do, uh, follow up with your plastic surgeon once a year just to make sure things are okay. And doctor, how can you detect if there is a problem with these breast implants? So most of the time, uh, well, with the texture implant specifically, the concern, uh, like Rob said, was the breast implant associated ALCL. And that usually shows up as uh, swelling on one side, pain, just kind of something different that happens with your implants. And so if a person, if a lady is experiencing these symptoms, what should she do? Go to her plastic surgeon. The one who actually um, performed the surgery? Uh, Theoretically, yes. But uh, to be honest with you, a lot of the patients we see to talk about implant removal or replacement or revision, uh, they've had their implants for a long time. And a lot of their plastic surgeons have retired or stopped practicing or maybe the patients moved out of state. But see, my my understanding is that it, it was a recall, meaning, hey, ladies, if you got these things in, you get them out. And and so that's what the women that I have talked to and that I've seen on some of these social media forums and posts are basically all kind of wondering, OK, you know, how urgent is this? How safe is it to proceed with these in my body, et cetera? Sure. So what what do you say to them? Well, you, you have to know that there have been less than 600 cases of this ever reported. Right. 
And so there's millions of women with breast implants. So under 600, that's very rare. And uh, for this to happen, it's, it's pretty much specific to the textured implants. So if you don't have textured implants and you feel good, your breasts are okay, you're fine. Okay. Just the general recommendation, though, is once a year, follow up with your plastic surgeon. Is that a recommendation whether you – no matter what kind of implant you have? Yes, because implants don't last forever. Okay. And that's, that's – I think that's the mistake that a lot of people make. Uh, they – Maybe they don't think about it. It's just part of their body. They feel good. There's no problems. But we – I mean I could, could tell you so many times, so many stories of people who are totally fine. I've had implants for 40 years but no problems. I was walking my dog, tripped and fell and my implant exploded. Oh, yeah. And it, is it because it's been there too long? Yeah, absolutely. And 40 it's years is way too long. What's, 40 what's years? Life, yeah. Wow. What's the lifespan? After 10 years, about 50% of patients will have some kind of revision. So we usually say, you know, between 10 and 15 years, that's when you want to start thinking about maybe changing your implants out or doing something a little different. You know, Rob, we've had cases where a woman has had an implant and then there's been a chest trauma, like in an auto accident with the seatbelt. Right. Have you seen those, Doc? Sure, I have, yeah. And then you can detect, uh, I mean, when they have that trauma, they should immediately go to their doctor or go to you to Absolutely. have it checked out, right? Absolutely. Now, I forgot to mention, and I didn't want to just jump right in to the, uh, the Allergan controversy, but you practice uh, the full spectrum of pl- pl- plastic surgery, correct? Correct, yes. All right. And so, and that includes both cosmetic and reconstructive. Absolutely. Right. And in fact, um, well, tell us, what, what is the difference between those two? So a reconstructive surgery, we would say, is something that restores your body appearance following like an illness, cancer, trauma, something like that, whereas a cosmetic procedure is something designed to enhance your appearance. Okay. Now, implants can be used for both, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So if a woman was un- unfortunate enough to have breast cancer mm-hmm. and need to uh, have a mastectomy or double mastectomy, then she could opt to have the implants Correct. put in to restore yep. her, her appearance. And, and you know, about 90% of women who do have uh, breast cancer and undergo mastectomy, the, about 90% of them will do reconstruction with the expanders and implants rather than using uh, part of their own body to do it. Wow, well, I could see this though as being very traumatic if you, you know, were a breast cancer survivor and then you had these implants and now you find out that they have to be removed. Sure. But again, remember though, if, if, you, have, uh, if you have breast implants um, and you don't have any symptoms and you have textured implants, the recommendation right now is not to go get them removed. Oh, they, exactly. So right. what tests okay. can you do to determine whether or not there's a problem? Well, that usually it would be uh, starting with a clinical presentation. So for example, patient comes in, she's had implants for 10 to 15 years. All of a sudden, she feels like one side's bigger than the other side, noticeably bigger, firm. So the first thing we do is maybe do an ultrasound because it's, it's simple, it's non-invasive test. And the ultrasound would tell us whether or not we have fluid. If we have fluid, then we probably proceed with an MRI. MRI is a little bit, not invasive, but it's, it's a little bigger test. Um, MRI would tell us definitively if we have fluid and potentially a radiologist could sample some of the fluid and send that for immunologic testing, which would tell us uh, the character of the cells in there. If the cells are CD30 positive, which is a a marker on the cells, then the next step, and that would be presumed to be the breast implant, BIA, ALCL, breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, in which case the treatment would be removal of the implant along with all the scar tissue caps that forms around the implant. Oh, my goodness. And that's that's at an outpatient surgery center or is that done in the hospital? It could be either. Just depends on how healthy the patient is. Have you suffered or been injured by someone else's negligence? When you need a legal team that will stand up for what is right, won't give up the fight and obtain justice, call 818-886-6600. Mandel Trial Lawyers specializes in personal injury cases of all types. Whether it's a car accident, product or premises liability, dog bite, or a catastrophic injury, Mandel Trial Lawyers are there for you when the fight is worth it. Call now for your free consultation, 818-886-6600. Let the scales of justice tip in your favor. So I'm wondering, obviously, you, you came in today and you were kind enough to bring these samples. And um, this one is virtually clear. It's very, very smooth in texture. 
and uh, and then you have this other one that you cannot see through, and it is textured. Correct. And so what was the theory behind creating the textured implant in the first place? So the textured implant, uh, as you might imagine, is rougher than the smooth implant. Right. Uh, that is designed to adhere to the body and not move as much. Okay. So for example, if you look closely at the textured implant, it's not round. Ah. It's shaped. It's, it's a, we call that an anatomic shaped implant where if you hold it up from the side, you can really see the bottom of the implant. Right. It's flat. This is shaped kind of like a breast. Okay. So you see how there's more projection on the bottom. It's flatter up top. Yeah. So this is designed to sit on the chest like this. Okay. And so for a cancer patient, this would be a good choice because they don't have any breast tissue and this would give them kind of a more natural shape of the breast. Okay. The downside though is it sticks to the, the pec muscle, the breast tissue, and it doesn't move as much. So if you want to get cleavage, push your breast implants together with a push-up bra, this probably isn't the right choice for you. Okay. But why do they? Why would a woman uh, want to have no movement of the implant or limited movement? Why would they want it to adhere to the uh, uh, inside of the uh, the tissue in the first place? Because uh, when you have movement of the breast implant, it's a little bit unnatural. Uh, it it, it can, gives you that big round, full look. But some women don't want that. They want to have more. We call it the athletic look or the soccer mom look. Okay. Where uh, when you're not wearing clothes. This implant gives you that really sloped shape of the breast. The, um, the texture implant gives you a really sloped shape of the breast, whereas the smooth implant, if you wear a push-up bra, gives you really round, full cleavage. I see. Okay. So it really is more of a, a cosmetic choice. Yeah, style really. choice, yeah. And, and why, do we know why the textured uh, surface or the textured implant is linked to the the uh, allocan, yeah. Well, is linked to the uh, the large cell lymphoma. We have we have theories. Okay. And um, the the smooth implant, um, uh, it's when you feel the surface, there's totally smooth. So it does, their body doesn't react as strongly to that. I see. The textured implant, the theory is that 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 along potentially with the presence of a certain type of bacteria, is kicking off this low-level chronic immune stimulation mm. that over time, your body's response is, is to create, in rare circumstances, this particular type of cancer. We're Larry and Rob Mandel, the brothers-in-law, here on Go Country 105. Do you have a legal issue you need help with? We want to hear from you. Find us on Instagram and send us a message. Then tune in on Saturdays at 8 a.m. right here on Go Country 105. Hey, if you missed any part of this show or you just want to hear it again, go to brothersonlaw.com for all of our previous shows and all things Brothers on Law. Didn't they do any testing before they put this on the market, though? How well, can they course. test for that? I don't know. I mean, that's why I'm asking Doug. Well, that's that's the thing is uh, these products are they're rigorously tested. They're FDA approved. And to be quite frank, the breast implants are probably the most tested medical device in the history of medical devices. I mean, think about all, like you guys mentioned before, the lawsuits, they've been on the market, off the market. Many, many large scale studies have been done, big population based studies where, you know, you take the entire population, you compare the incidence of, of diseases to patients uh, with implants, without implants. And kind of those studies have never shown an association between uh, autoimmune disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, Sjogren's syndrome, and uh, breast implants. It's never been proven. But yeah. isn't it, wasn't it the CDC that issued the warning on the textured implants and it's linked to this particular form of lymphoma? Uh, it was actually published first in the plastic surgery or one of our plastic surgery journals. Okay. Uh, that was the first time. But then now the FDA just recently had hearings on this where they heard from a lot of different patients, from plastic surgeons, from implant companies. And that's what led to the voluntary recall. Right. Now, okay. if a person, if a lady does have this, you know, symptoms and has you know, a connection between the breast implant and some kind of autoimmune system problem, et cetera, et cetera, the recovery, though, is limited, Rob, as you know, the non-economic losses are limited per micra to a certain amount. Well, that's not true at all. Sorry, okay, so to, sorry to tell you. So tell because, us. Because to go it's after... It's a product liability, right? Well, yeah, it's a product. And now there are hurdles. There are significant legal hurdles uh, in a product that's been approved by the FDA. 
okay? But assuming that we can get beyond those hurdles, and, and you and I are looking into this and are encouraging women who have had those issues to call us, but, but to go after the doctor that uh, relied on the FDA, that relied on the product literature to, and put them in would be, in my view, now other lawyers may disagree, but in my view, it would be ridiculous. The, because if there is that link and the person is sick or has significant worries about becoming sick and wants to get the breast implants out, then their better recourse is against, in my view, the manufacturer, where there are not limits to uh, pain and suffering damages like you do have under the microstatute, which you're referring to, has to do with lawsuits against medical providers. Right. So, uh, which is limits it to two hundred fifty thousand dollars under current law, but um, that seems very unfair because that law was instituted when in nineteen seventy five. Yeah, I, I think that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother day. You know, because one can argue, uh, you know, quite a bit on that, and I think that. You know, um, I, I'm sure most doctors probably favor that law, but but you never know. I don't know how, how you feel about that. But, but I don't think, uh, I really question that individual physicians would have exposure under this current particular uh, controversy because... Um, this is a product liability case. It's a, yeah, it's a product, and if it is defective, then the better recourse for a multitude of reasons, not to mention just legal simplicity also, and not being tied to the micro uh, limitations, would be to, for the women to uh, uh, focus on the manufacturer. Have you suffered or been injured by someone else's negligence? When you need a legal team that will stand up for what is right, won't give up the fight and obtain justice, call 818-886-6600. Mandel Trial Lawyers specializes in personal injury cases of all types. Whether it's a car accident, product or premises liability, dog bite, or a catastrophic injury, Mandel Trial Lawyers are there for you when the fight is worth it. Call now for your free consultation, 818-886-6600. Let the scales of justice tip in your favor. Hey, if you missed any part of this show or you just want to hear it again, go to brothersonlaw.com for all of our previous shows and all things Brothers on Law. I notice on here, doctor, that the textured one you brought is not an Allergan product, but a mentor product. So is that also recalled or is it just the Allergan? It's just the Allergan. Interesting. Why is that? Well, it has to do with the, the method the manufacturing method that they use to create the texturing. And there are differences between Allergan and Mentor and Sientra in, in how they create that texture. Um, for whatever reason, the Allergan uh, method seems to be linked more with more cases of the ALCL than the other ones. And so the FDA just recommended that the Allergan recall rather than the other two companies. Oh, wow. So they're just standing there on their own at this point. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think that... Um, <clears throat> I think it, it behooves a, a woman who has those implants to to talk to someone like us and see what their rights might be, especially like you say, if they're having, you know, those kinds of uh, problems or symptoms. But uh, the, the one question I have of you is, shouldn't they take a look at things before? if they have those particular implants, shouldn't they take a look at things before they're having any issues, at least have blood work done or something like that? Because once you have the lymphoma, don't you have it? I mean, how do you, you know, uh, avoid getting it in the first place kind of thing? Well, so a couple of things you brought up there. One of them was treatment. Right. Uh, Number two is diagnosis. Okay. So monitoring following up with your plastic surgeon uh, annually is important right. because that's that's how you find things that are early. You, know, you can, as a woman, you can be examining your breasts, you can be in the shower, but you, know, you see, a woman typically sees one pair of breasts, maybe two. In a given day, I see you know, 30 or 40 breasts. But that, that's why you follow up with your plastic surgeon, somebody who sees a lot of breasts, who's experienced and can know when something's going wrong. Right. So there is no blood test to diagnose this. The only way to, uh, to really get this is to get fluid from around the breast implant. Wow. 
Okay. And so a lot of times when we take out, and I take out a lot of breast implants. It's one of, one of my specialties is taking them out and also kind of reconstructing the breast afterwards, doing a lift. Um, we ask, we have women who ask us, can you test for the ALCL? And my response to that is if you don't have fluid in your breast, then I can't. Because if you don't have fluid, you don't have it, period. Really? I mean, because you can't even test the blood? Nope. You oh. can't test the blood. And why is that? Well, it's because this is different from any other type of lymphoma. This is not like a, a Hodgkin's lymphoma or a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the sense of this is in your bloodstream, it's in your lymph nodes. This starts around the breast implant. I see. And it's, it's a tumor of the scar tissue capsule that forms around the breast implant. And does it metastasize? Uh, I, I think there have been reports of it spreading, but as long as you catch it early in general and you take out all the scar tissue around the breast implant and the breast implant, I think most of the time that pe- people are uh, do very well with this. So early detection is so critical. Early detection is and important. ALCL, what does that stand for, Doc? Anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Anaplastic. But this is breast lymphoma. implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Right, right. Well, that is um, very informative. Yeah, very I mean, daunting. It, well, I mean, it, it, it. I still have the question as to what um, you know, what a woman can do to to investigate that, short of feeling this this lump mm-hmm. or this fluid. Because I'm, and I, so my question was, if they do an annual mammogram, mm-hmm. will it show up? Well, the annual mammogram is recommended for women over 40 regardless. Right. So, and and this actually comes up all the time uh, with patients who come in for breast surgery. Uh, I won't operate on somebody for an elective breast surgery if they haven't had a mammogram within one year if they're over 40. Okay. I've seen patients, because I do breast cancer uh, reconstruction also, I've seen patients who have had uh, augmentations, reductions, lifts um, recently and feel a lump afterwards and that turns out to be cancer and they didn't have the screening. So in my practice, nobody gets surgery unless they have that mammogram within one year. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and of course, brothersonlaw.com. Hey, if you missed any part of this show or you just want to hear it again, go to brothersonlaw.com for all of our previous shows and all things Brothers on Law. And you were mentioning in your practice you you actually have a, a focus or a specialty in removing yes. uh, implants that the women don't want anymore mm-hmm. and then doing some other kind of reconstruction to to enhance the appearance. Yes. What does that entail? So it's it's a lift, you know, but it's different from the standard lift because as you can imagine, when you have breast implants, your skin gets stretched out, uh, the breast tissue changes. Okay. And so uh, if you just take the implant out, it, it kind of looks like I had a patient tell me it looked like a pair of socks okay. or somebody else said just like a deflated balloon. Ooh, that's sad. Yeah. So but you what, can, you, what is this procedure where you, is that, are you using an implant to, to enhance it again? No, it's, it's a way of uh, doing a mastopexy or a lift where you uh, kind of take the tissue that you have and shape it and kind of sculpt it in a certain way so you can maintain uh, a natural breast shape. Uh, will and, insurance cover that? No, insurance doesn't cover that. What, even if they have the something like an allergan where they have a, a daunting fear of developing this uh, large cell lymphoma down the line? That is correct. Still won't cover it. Nope. So they have to either look to allergan or, or some other source like litigation in order to, uh, to get the funding. Well, you, you have to, I mean, we have to be guided by science right. and guided by the FDA because like you said before, I mean, that's what plastic surgeons, doctors, and patients, that's what we have to rely on. That's the best source of information for us. Of course. So if, if we have patients who are thinking about removing their implants, just taking them out, but they have no symptoms, they, just, they have this fear, that's not covered by anything. Right. If they have textured implants and they want to change to smooth implants, Allergan will give them a free pair of implants. I see. But they won't pay for the surgery, but they'll give them a free pair of implants just to take them out and change them. Right. That's, so that's, that's where the cool. – well, that's where the – if you go on these forums that we – and we've been you know, looking into this, um, that's where the women are furious because yeah, it's like, them? hey, you know, a pair of implants, what does that do me? You know, I mean, I know that that's something, mm-hmm. but it's the, the cost – 
what is true the cost? cost? No, the, but the, the true cost involved is the time for the doctor, for the physician, yeah, sure. and the hospital, and the anesthesiologist, etc. So that's where they're, you know, I think Allergan is making a big, you know, they're just holding up a big target sign, if you ask me. Yeah, Rob, I want to clarify one thing with Dr. Hirsch. You also do other types of plastic surgery. We do. Right? And what would that involve? Like if somebody is like a dog bite injury or something like that that we handle? Yeah. Where there's scarring and it needs to be like dermabrasion or sure. some other type uh, of... Lasers, procedure. dermabrasion, yeah. scar revision surgery. Uh, we do a lot of treatment of skin cancer surgery. Yeah. Now, what uh, skin cancer surgery, does that mean someone has had skin cancer removed and it still leaves a scar? Or are you the actual primary surgeon removing the cancer? just depends. I don't do melanoma surgery, but I can do reconstruction after the melanoma. Okay. Um, but basal cells, squamous cells, you know, the more common, uh, less aggressive skin cancers, I'm, I remove these all the time. Okay. And you're doing it in a fashion that um, leaves less scarring than if they were just doing it like a dermatologist or, or some other Trying surgeon. to. Trying right. to, yeah. Right. That's good stuff. We're Larry and Rob Mandel, the brothers-in-law, here on Go Country 105. Do you have a legal issue you need help with? We want to hear from you. Find us on Instagram and send us a message. Then tune in on Saturdays at 8 a.m. right here on Go Country 105. Hey, if you missed any part of this show or you just want to hear it again, go to brothersonlaw.com for all of our previous shows and all things Brothers on Law. We have a call. Tip of the day and some true and Well, we have things. a call. Um, Robin, we, we have time for one little call. Hi, uh, this is Robin. I got into a DUI Tuesday night. I never had one before. I don't know what to do. I'm not even sure on what steps I could take to get through this. Is there any tips you guys could give me to help me get through this easily? Thanks, guys. I've never had one before. I don't know what to do. What are the steps I can take to get through this as easily as possible? Well, since we don't do criminal law and DUIs, uh, I, we can't give you the exact steps, but I know the first step and the best step for Robin, and that is to call a um, criminal defense lawyer immediately and Find get a good right. representation. Because there's and, so many things going on with that. It depends on the reading and what type of test they took. Whether she's had one before. Sure. They, they they are tough on people these days, yeah, and, and probably for good reason. But and, you know, Rob, they're thinking about um, lowering the the amount of alcohol in your system to point oh five. I think that's instituted in Utah. That's like now. half a drink. I know it's crazy. Yeah, but 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 uh, Larry Backman is a good buddy of ours. He does a lot of uh, criminal defense. B A K M A N. Right. And uh, out of Century City. Out of Century City, she can uh, tr uh, try him. Yeah, and so, so um, no, I want to thank Dr. Hirsch first, okay? Okay, uh, before you, we go into I'll thank him else. second then. That, there you go, thanks. And I'll third that. But anyway, well, you know, that information that you imparted us today is very, very important. I hope our listeners, you know, appreciate the uh, information that you've, you know, told us. They about. do, they do. And how and, can they find you? Right. Doc? How can they find you, Doc? We are located in uh, Sherman Oaks, um, and we have also a website. Uh, www.hirschplasticsurgery.com. Hirsch is H I R S C H. H I R S C H plastic surgery. And what's the phone number, Doc? Phone number is 818-825-8131. One more time, please, because that's a good number. 818-825-8131. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you, Dr. Yeah, Elliot Hirsch, for coming down. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. And it's a tough one. It's a tough subject to have to talk about and and we hope we didn't grill you too much on it no worries. and uh, we want to also thank all our listeners for tuning in and please do join us next week at the same time 8 a.m saturday mornings right here on go country 105 and remember let the scales of justice tip in your favor The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice.